This edition I'm going to look at the empty arrays. And an empty array is any array that has a zero in its shape. So if it has no rows or no columns or no tables, it's an empty array. There's essentially nothing there. If I look at the standard display, I can look at some variables. And these variables all look the same. They're all empty. They just return the next line. That's not true of every empty array. Sometimes you can have variables that will return three lines. And although those last two both return three lines, we're going to see that they're quite different. So let's look at the enhanced display and see those differences. So starting with A, I see it's shape zero and it's an integer. Now I could as well create a, a shape of a literal. And that means I would start with the literals, but there's no literals. It's zero shape. It's got nothing in it but it started from literals. So I've included that information because uh, so, sometimes it can be useful, sometimes it makes no difference at all. But I thought if I know it, I may as well put it in. Let's get B. So B is interesting because it has a different shape, 0, 0 instead of 0, and yet it looks the same. And that was something I had to kind of wrestle with because I wanted them to look different, but the only way for me to make B look different than A was to ripple a whole bunch of complexity through the rest of the displays. And to me, it made more sense just to say, if you hover over it, you'll immediately see that it's a different shape than what this one is. So a different shape between those two. But it's enough that you know that it's empty because it's signaled that way. So let's look at C. So C is different again. It is 203 is the shape. So the zero is the rows. It's got two tables, zero rows, and three columns. And it started from integers. But A, B, and C all displayed exactly the same within the standard way of looking at J. Let's look at D and E because they're different again. So I've got D and I have E. And you'll see here if I look at D here, its shape is 210, and E, its shape is 30, so they're not even the same rank. So there's significant differences going on there. And it was my feeling that if things are different, I want them as much as possible to look different, and that's why I've designed it this way. Now, I'll go back to the standard display, and we can look at some of the things that show up when you're, when you're boxing um, uh, zero-shaped arrays. So here's an array I've developed. That's what it looks like. But given the size of the boxes, it actually becomes confusing as to what's going on inside. You can know they're empty. There's nothing in them. But you don't know the shape of what's in them. At least it'll become apparent when we see this in the enhanced display. And we see suddenly there's an awful lot going on inside there that's not shown in terms of the regular display. So if we look at this, we see this is 2, 0, this is 0, 3, and it happens to me from a floating if that made a difference. This is 3, 0, 2, and it's irrational if that made a difference. And then this is 0, 3, 2, and it's extended if that made a difference. So all that information is included in the way that I've chosen to show uh, empty arrays. And although there is a disadvantage to this, and sometimes if you want to have uh, a return that looks like it's nothing, you would do something like this and just return an empty line. I'll actually return something that tells me what shape it is. Um, and so that is a disadvantage. If I go to the standard display and do the same thing, it just goes to the next line. So that's a convenient way to have just the next line return, and you'll see it happen a lot in J. My visual way doesn't do that, but I'm not thinking of my visual way of doing things so much as a way to uh, create programs that display for you. I'm actually more interested in seeing what the program is doing while I'm creating it. So I think they're two different tools, but I find my tool a lot easier to work with when I'm programming.